Hi, this is Danny442. like to welcome everyone to PAX East 2015 of Boston. There's a lot of things to see and I'm very excited. Um, I'll be showing you what I experienced here and let's have a look. We're here at the Boston Convention Exhibition Center. It will be the home of PAX East 2015. As you can see, as I move down the escalator, the sheer amount of exhibitors and the amount of people that's on the floor is amazing. It was a mind-boggling thing experience for me. It's, it's my first time at any game convention. Moving through all the people, my first booth that I encountered was Nintendo. And the first game that I got to get my hands on is codenamed Steam. Now it is a turn-based strategy game with elements of a third-person shooter. Um, what's cool is uh, it, it involves a team of characters facing against each other and opposing aliens on each side taking turns to maneuver and attack. Now it's my first time venturing in this kind of genre. I never got into it in the past but um, playing with it, getting to speak with the reps, explaining to me what to do and what to how to uh, uh, beat your opponent teams makes a really interesting genre for me to get into in the future so I'm looking forward to it and it's really promising. Uh, moving on, my next game I got to take a look at is Splatoon. Now this is the build from E3 so it is the first time the public gets to experience this game. Uh, Splatoon is a primarily a team based third person shooter which is uh, playable up to 8 players and you can see there's 8 stations that each player was able to take care of. Um, What's the goal is to obviously to attack your opponent, but to spray as much paint as you can to cover the land. And it's, it's calculated by percentage of how much your ink color is covering the area. Um, but it's, it's more strategy into it and then that. When you spray your colors on the floor, you can actually maneuver your character easier. But if you're able to, if you're in standing in other opponent's color, it hinders your character's ability to move around. So that. It is a little bit strategy involved, so it, it gets in, it gets more involved in that. And I must say, this is a really exciting new IP from Nintendo. Here we have as Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate from the Nintendo 3DS. It's made and published by Capcom. It's a really cool game where the, you see you take the role of a hunter that undertakes quests and challenges um, dangerous creatures that inhabit various locales. So really interesting. It's my first time playing any Monster Hunter game. Uh, moving to the next booth, it's right next to Nintendo, and that is Square Enix, uh, one of my favorite developers growing up playing the Final Fantasy series. The first thing you notice that when you enter their booth is the variety of character figures that they have available for sale. Uh, here we have some of the Kingdom Hearts 2 Formation Arts uh, series of figures, and uh, here we have is the Final Fantasy Static Arts Mini, and I believe there are eight of them. Uh, they caught my attention and uh, I'll show you two that I've got uh, previously. Here we have is the DC Variant Static Arts Mini based on DC comic characters. And this is some of the phone straps and keychains based on a variety of uh, Square Enix characters. These are the two uh, Static Arts Mini uh, figures that I spoke about and they're really cute. I have to obtain them. I'm a really big fan of uh, these two characters. Here is a game that uh, is very new to me. It's Life is Strange. They premiered a couple of the games for the public to play and here we have is the Final Fantasy 14 A Realm Reborn uh, MMORPG really cool to have them set up there for everyone to play now as I make my way through the convention center I did notice one large green uh, booth and it happened to be uh, Microsoft's Xbox uh, they did feature a variety of games that took a large amount of space because they did set up a uh, large amount of uh, stations where gamers get to play competitively and also single play with the uh, game such as Halo 5 Guardians uh, which they promote heavily, Fable Legends, uh, Evolve, Battlefield Hardline, uh, Scream Ride, State of Decay, Year One Survival Guide and a very colorful Ori and uh, Blind Forest which I found really interesting and what's cool is uh, they allowed everyone to uh, pre-order these games or buy these games directly from GameStop and they had a booth nearby. Uh, here we have is Oculus uh, VR booth, a really, really interesting concept that was crowdfunded back in uh, about two years ago in Kickstarter. And uh, when I look at these things, they remind me of the Virtual Boy from Nintendo that failed uh, decades back uh, when uh, Nintendo Venture in goggle-based technology. 
Moving on, here we are at the Gung Ho Online Entertainment booth. Now, first glance, I thought it was an extension of Nintendo's booth because seeing it so colorful and with uh, Mario and Luigi taking various pictures with uh, various patrons at the convention center, may give me that impression. I was able to demo uh, Puzzle and Dragon Super Mario Brothers edition of the game. And what's interesting is it is a puzzle game with elements of RPG and strategy. Uh, games and it's co-developed by both Gung Ho and Nintendo in a collaborative effort. Uh, really interesting. It is a very simple game, but pretty fun if you just put in short takes at it. Moving on, uh, Twitch was on hand at the site of PAX East to cover the event. If you happen to not able to be here, this is the place to log on to witness the event at home. Uh, YouTube was also at site uh, to promote various YouTubers, uh, Let's Plays, uh, people that are popular on YouTube and that, that is one of their mainstays in terms of their uh, large audience base. Um, it's good to see that they uh, uh, put themselves out there to do that. Uh, here we have an interesting area where uh, people can just come up on camera on this behind this green screen to be uh, recorded uh, wearing different costumes and props and just having fun and being silly on camera and they report it and put this on YouTube and here you see me. Now we're on site at Capcom, one of my favorite booths in the entire PAX East. They had these various uh, tents that anyone can come up and demo the latest Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. And they had this really interesting uh, caravan wagon vehicle that people lined up for a while to get in. And when you once you're in, they had these uh, various artwork and weapons on display in there to bring the atmosphere of the game to life. So I thought that was a really nice touch on their side. They also had various items on sale in this glass cabinet. You can see some various phone cases, hats, and a really interesting um, a blaster from Mega Man, uh, various mugs, uh, art books, uh, especially like Mega Man and Street Fighter. Um, they also had merchandise uh, spanning into uh, Resident Evil and Okami as well with uh, lanyards, bags, plushies, with all sorts of goodies. Moving toward the latter part of the convention center, we see these very smaller vendors such as the Songbird Ocarinas. What we have guessed it, they specialize in uh, selling ocarinas. Um, here we have Screenwave Media where I was able to meet Pat the Ennis Punk. It's really cool to take pictures with him and talk to him. In any gaming convention, it wouldn't be complete without uh, video games to purchase. Uh, Sudden Impact was on site. They are a retro game store um, based in Boston and they did sell various games and systems from various um, generations such as the Nintendo NES, Super Nintendo, Genesis, Nintendo 64, uh, PlayStation, Game Boy. Uh, various systems that I mean more than I can name you have lanyards as well like you see here um, they also had various uh, portable systems such as the Nintendo Advance 3DS Nintendo DS in a variety of colors and forms um, we also have here you can see various PlayStation 1 games um, especially a lunar there that's really interesting for me to see in person which I <laughs> um, here we have uh, some Xbox um, Nintendo Wii U uh, more Genesis games so they had a pretty decent amount of selection um, and people are buying it up pretty quickly so pretty cool to see. Moving away from the convention center uh, floor we see the console tourney area. Now they hold various game console tournaments here and you can see people here playing Super Smash Bros for the Wii U in a very friendly uh, but competitive atmosphere so it's really fun to see and uh, really a place where um, eSports can come alive. Just right next door we have the classic console area where any uh, gamer retro or modern can come in and enjoy and relax playing uh, old style gaming. Uh, they had various systems on display that you could just come up and play such as the Dreamcast, the Sega Saturn, the Nintendo, the original Xbox, Super Nintendo, you name it they had it. You could just come to a vendor ask them for a game and just give it to you and just play with your heart's content. Just right outside of this room, you can see this lobby where a gamer can be just a gamer. Check this out. A little crazy. Hit up the DJ if you want to practice. Well, we're here at NLPAX. It was a really incredible three days. Uh, so let's head back to my room and show you what I got and I'll tell you my overview of the entire PAX East 2015.
Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that uh, uh, tour of the convention of what I've saw and I hope you guys stay tuned to the very end of this video where I give you my impressions of the entire convention and also a photo uh, of all the various people that I was able to uh, get at PAX East 2015 in Boston and especially with the two individuals that uh, made this experience very enjoyable and truly memorable. So hope you guys stay tuned to the very end.